Welcome to Paxa Rubiana. We just had this coordination meeting for U37. I think in the evening there will be the upload. It was very interesting debate from Odessa to Croatia and I really liked it. But we had one debate which I here in Schönbrunn in my sunset talk I would like to come back to the point because the question about how to end the war. Of course, you know, when we have EU candidate status now, the summit or EU potential candidate status, that makes a big difference. But at the end of the day, both is a big success for Ukraine. You know, it will not end the war. <laughs> you know, there, we should not have an illusion that this will be in any way the end of the war. And there is also an illusionary thinking that this war will end at all. I mean, both sides have significant war waging motivation tools and they, man, the idea that you end the war by defeat, <laughs> yes, uh, that's one way, or by victory, that's another way, both uh, is impossible. <laughs> the idea, I mean, what is victory that would end the war? that you really defeat Russia, militarily push it back out of Ukraine. That is very hard to imagine. Even when we give all the weapons in the world to Ukraine, Ukraine uh, Russia has also a lot of weapons. So, and the idea that uh, Ukraine will be defeated with uh, the motivation and the potential. I mean, if we would stop uh, completely to supply Ukraine financially, blockade it and force it but we will never do that <laughs> and even then the ukrainians have uh, the will to fight and the means to fight it's a 40 million nation with capacity and with these tools the motivation the industry i mean i don't see an end of this war this will be a long war, it will be a grinding war. It is now in the Eastern Front. It will go on for years. And that we should somehow communicate to our population. Because there is a lot of illusions with the politicians, with even the activists. Yeah? Oh yes, um, it just started and then it will end. All wars end with diplomacy. But there is no diplomatic settlement yeah which they both can find Ukraine can never unilet also just uh, resign and say okay this land is no longer my land I don't know any democratic government any government in the world which could do that I mean Russia has no capacity to they tried to occupy Ukraine they were defeated when you, you can, of course, occupy countries and then impose your will. That has happened in the history often. But that capacity Russia doesn't have. And also uh, now, with all the things that happened, there's no way that the West can let a complete defeat of Ukraine happen. That's also not going to happen. On the contrary, there's now a lot of support. Financially, militarily, all is running up towards much bigger support and so it's the West against Russia and fiscally we are much stronger industrial we are 20 times stronger financially maybe 40 times but Russia is not on the verge of bankruptcy yeah maybe they can default on some international debt but it will not happen that they will somehow lay their arms no, no, this is high prestige for them, it's high prestige for us, it's, the stakes are very high. So when we continue like we do at the moment, this will be for years and years grinding on, with all the consequences for the global financial system, inflation will be not so, man, the higher prices next year, we have priced them into the system. So it will be the food supplies, there's enough to food supply in the world. It's not all coming from Ukraine and anyhow Ukraine will be 80% delivering, maybe 60%, but its uh, world markets are not dominated by Russia, not in the energy, not in the, in the agriculture. We will just adopt and uh, shocks will be absorbed. 
we'll move on. So, but the war will continue. The war is now for the long term. Maybe it will be less intense. Maybe there comes a moment the Russian think they have conquered enough in the east. They will certainly conquer more land in the east. We will certainly supply more weapons, but I don't see a point, a equilibrium where suddenly I have to run over the street here. That's my favorite, podcasting and running over streets. <laughs> so, no, I don't see any, any short term or long term. I mean, I'm just thinking loud, what could really end this war? I personally, and that I argue in all these moments, and I said it from the beginning, after the initial shock of the first week, I think only Western intervention can stop that war, NATO intervention. We have, and I repeat it, while it's not popular, nowhere, it's a very lonely position, but only NATO intervention can stop the war with a, a limited intervention. Of course, on the side of Ukraine, but of course as well not fulfilling all the Ukraine's wishes. There will be no NATO intervention for liberation of Crimea or liberation of Donbass. But yes for Kherson, yes for Saporizhia, yes for Mariupol. These are clear targets. Russia has nothing to do there. There is no basis of legitimacy for any of the land claims there. Not even in the Russian context. <laughs> they have laid claim on this Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast. We will also never recognize any of that. I made it very clear, but okay, they can occupy that. What we can do about it. But Kherson and Saporizhia, that can be liberated. At least we can push back, have a no-fly zone west of the Dnieper. We can sink all the ships in the Russian, uh, also of the Russian fleet in the Black Sea. Yes, that we can. Yeah, that's also legal. <laughs> that's also not the Third World War. You know, they get adequate warning. at international territory, seas. They have no reason to be there. If foreign ships <laughs> blockade other ports, and that's uh, yeah, they can be shot down. Yeah. If Russia then wants to escalate to World War Three, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> They uh, cannot even defeat Ukraine, if they have a fancy that one. I don't think so. They really want to go to war with us. <laughs> Absolutely no, no, no. If they want to also throw some nukes, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, our nukes work and there's a very questionable technology. If they want to commit suicide, take the world with. I made all these statements. We will never attack Russia. No, there's no, will be no logic. These are weapons of ultimate self-defense. We will even not attack Crimea. No, there, that's annexed. We will never recognize it. But the logic is very clear. You don't touch Crimea, you don't touch Russia. You even somehow grudgingly accept the Donetsk and Lugansk laws for now. You know, and the rest you liberate and especially the Black Sea, you liberate. You shoot all the Russian ships down, every single one of them, when it's outside of Sevastopol port, outside the coastal area, you shoot it all down, you shoot each Russian airplane down. Yes, 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 there were many Russian airplanes already shot down over Syria. I made the case already many times. So you shoot them down and you shoot down every artillery piece outside of Donetsk and Lugansk. Russia can even claim to have a victory. They got all Donetsk, all Lugansk. That's strategically, ultimately, I'm very sorry, not so relevant. The Black Sea matters, the Dnipro matters, Saporizhia matters, Kherson matters. That will be all liberated. Russia can somehow claim to have won Donetsk and Lugansk completely. I know that's not fine. But that's ultimately completely, you know, regrettable. But, you know, that's also not that we, they will 
erect their GDR there. We will anyhow then. But what we of course need to do is to take then Ukraine into NATO, EU, the Euro. That's the logic of a divided country between East and West of the new German, German division. That is what we could have had much easier without the trillion dollar cost. Yeah. And I was just thinking about how much money we ultimately will have already at the end of 2022. When it's now 54 billion from America, at Europe and the UK and Canada, Japan. So we are at 100 billion of direct costs for support, military and uh, support of Ukraine. Then you add what adds up ultimately to the beauty of whatever the end of the year. It will be probably 200 billion. So every year will cost about 100 billion additionally, maybe more, a full war year. Yes, that's only the cost of the war and only the cost of that direct confrontation yeah? and uh, the support of Ukraine. Then you have to add, of course, the indirect war cost, the rearmament of Europe and the economic consequences and the refugee crisis and so on and so on. So that's really very expensive. Yeah? That's the cost of a long war. We have to see that as well. That's why I think NATO intervention to stop the war is the much better way. And to my best knowledge, all wars in the recent European history from Croatia, Bosnia, Kosovo, they have ended with NATO intervention. <laughs> I don't know any other example. Uh, I mean, it's the West which has the power to do such things. And then the war ends on our terms. So it was in Kosovo, so it was in Bosnia, so it was in Croatia. Of course, there is risk attached, but the risk of a long war is also there. You cannot say, oh, it's riskless yeah, to have years and years of grinding war in Eastern Europe going on somehow, and the huge cost and the geostrategic risk. Yeah. So the question is, do you have decisive intervention, limited, with limited goals, which is also not very popular in Ukraine, because you basically impose division on them and you enforce it by inviting them to NATO. They will be then also in limited sovereignty for future decisions about war waging, because reconquest will definitely not be within their reach why they definitely want it. So you basically, it's not the right word occupy, but you basically take over responsibility for Ukraine, similar as for Western Germany. And then you are into responsibility for each of these nations. Thanks a lot. And that's exactly the option. And that's what I'm actually advocating all the time since 2017. And a lot of people are against it. But let's be very honest. It was from the beginning the much better concept, the division and the integration in the systems of the opposing poles of the world. Anything else is a big illusion. Good. That's my plan. That's my proposal. So, anyhow, we will see for more. More to come from Pax Europeana for peace. Bye.